Hello, hi, and welcome to another episode of The Emma Gunn Show and a midweek instalment of Bullet Points. This is just the midweek catch-up where we talk about maybe the past episode, I share some insight from listeners, and I just let you know what I've been up to. So, with that in mind, let's talk about something that I posted on my Instagram yesterday evening. So, to give you context, if you aren't following me on Instagram, I was in London yesterday. I had a series of appointments and smack bang in the middle of my day, which was actually really poor planning, was the Space NK, Space NK Christmas lunch. The Space NK Christmas lunch is a thing of dreams. It is something that people talk about for the remainder of the year, for the whole year in the lead up to it. It is always an absolute extravaganza. And so I was very excited to be going into London, not least because I was having really quite exciting work meetings with some brands and with some agencies, but also I was going to get the chance to see some people that I hadn't seen for a really long time. So I haven't seen Nadine Baggett for weeks, probably for a couple of months, actually. I hadn't seen Ruth Quilly for a few weeks, hadn't seen Lily Pebbles for ages. Although actually, when I was getting my hair done the other day at the Goldwell Academy on Shaftesbury Avenue, there's this bang on the window and it's dark outside and we... Uh, Nick, Nicholas and I, Nicholas, my colorist, look out and Lily's there and she's seen me in the chair. And so we, uh, so, but we couldn't see her, couldn't chat to her. But um, I saw Edwina Ings Chambers. I saw Jodie Kidd. I sat next to a really lovely lady called Hannah Cooper, who I hadn't met before. So it's just one of those things that you just see people that you haven't seen in a really long time, like Ginny, who's the PR, hadn't seen her in ages. And also Emma, who works really high up at Space NK. She's someone I've known for absolutely donkey's years. I went to her wedding. I went to her daughter's christening. Uh, just that kind of thing. It's that sort of real reconnection with people. And I hadn't seen Lisa Potter Dixon. And again, I'm mentioning names of people who you might not be 100% familiar with, but they've been on this podcast. But Lisa Potter Dixon is a friend. And I saw her very briefly at the launch of the new Selfridges Beauty Hall back in the summer. And I said, we haven't seen each other this year. This is mad. And then fast forward to yesterday. And we saw each other finally, which is really, really nice. We had a good, we had a, we had a brief but fantastic catch up. One of the, you know, with those people that you just don't need a really long time to reconnect. It was like that. And it was, it was really wonderful. The kind of thing that makes your heart feel quite full afterwards. So it's very nice. Anyway, I was in London is, is what I was trying to say. And if you are also following me on Instagram, you'll know that I have been on the hunt for these particular m &S jeans. They are a flare style with a patch pocket on the front. And so my appointment's finished. And then actually, I haven't even mentioned this. My appointment's finished and Lindsay Kelk is over in the UK promoting her new book, The Bell Witches. She's only here for a short spell. Normally when she does a book tour, she's here for five weeks. But this is really short. She came in on Sunday, Monday morning, and she leaves on Monday. So she's only here for a week, which is quite, quite brief and quite rare. I'm sort of used to Lindsay sort of hitting town and being around and available for a while. So we're sneaking time together as and when we can. And we were supposed to meet for lunch. I thought that the Space NK event was an evening thing. So I said, yeah, I'll meet you for lunch. Then I was like, oh, I have to go. To the, I, I got it wrong. It's my fault. They sent me the invitation. I just assumed it was a dinner. Caroline Hyman did the same thing, by the way. Um, to cut a long story short, she had appointments all day and even, even had a dinner at 6.30. And then I think I was on my way into London and she said, my four o'clock just cancelled. So we ran to the... We met, it was lovely. We, I gave her her birthday present from, from October, which is very nice. We went to Liberty, we went to Arthur's Cafe in Liberty and we had, uh, she had tea and a scone and I had a coffee and a brownie. And it was very nice to catch up with her. We spent two, just over two hours, just as you can imagine, as we do when we get together. And after that, I thought, well, I've just left Lindsay and it's quarter past six. The queue to get down onto the Victoria line is absolutely huge. I would normally walk to Victoria Station, but at this time of night in London, at that time of night in London, I don't want to do the cut through Green Park because Green Park is not lit. And unfortunately, it's not very nice. And I thought, well, you know what? I could just bimble about on Oxford Street for a little while, maybe pop into the big M&S next to Selfridges and try and find these jeans. And I thought, right, that's my plan. <clears throat> and then I also wanted to go to New Look, which I discovered is no longer there because I wanted to get this burgundy jumper that I've also been sharing on my Instagram and delivery options were absolutely garbage. So I was like, I just go, you know, just go get it. doesn't matter. So as I was walking from Oxford Circus to uh, the big m and I 
was walking along and I could see him probably about 50 meters ahead of me. I could see a guy in a green puffer jacket and there were a few other people in green puffer jackets around and they obviously one of these people, I used to call them lurkers, but that was Phoebe and friends. But, um, and then I thought they were called hawkers, but that's more of like a street seller. But um, after I posted on Instagram, many people said, they are called chuggers as a portmanteau of charity muggers because there's uh, they want you to donate to a charity, but there's something quite aggressive. And sometimes you can feel a little bit forced into it. And that's exactly what happened. But actually what happened was he came up to me and he does what 90% of them do where they try and get into your they try and either get your attention and or get into your physical space by paying you a compliment. You've got a nice smile. Now, I never want to tell these people to go away. I hear other people tell them to F off and things like that. And that's not really what I want to do. When I was starting out as a journalist, I used to do something called vox popping, which is where you would go into the streets and you would have to just go up to strangers and canvas their opinion on a particular thing that the newspaper felt you was relevant to whatever was going on. So you might have to go up to people and they'd say, you know, try and get a cross section or we're really interested in what women hear about this or this is definitely something that affects people over a certain age or under a certain age. So you'd have an idea of who would be appropriate to target, if you like. And you would go up and say, hi, I'm from the Seven Notes Chronicle. I would be really interested to get your opinion on X, Y, and Z, you know, um, 50% of family run businesses have now left the high street. Do you think that this is having a negative impact on the town? That kind of thing, or the local election is coming up. We're just wondering uh, how you feel about the campaign, how it's been run so far and whether you'll be voting, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And again, many people would brush you off, tell you to go away. And so I never want to do that. I always want to, I always say hi, but I then don't make eye contact face forward and just keep walking. And what was different about this, that normally is something that makes them not follow. But what was different about this is he got shoulder to shoulder with me, made physical contact and kept talking. And I wasn't listening, truthfully. He was talking about something to do about, I think it might have been knife crime or young men who were uh, from particular area, like basically disadvantaged areas and supporting them. And then he just said, is this something you want to donate to today? And I said, no, thank you without making it, just looked straight on. No, thank you. And at this point, like my shoulders up, I'm trying to put some sort of physical barrier between us, but he is not, he is being quite persistent. And he said, can I ask why you don't want to make a donation today? And I said, yeah, I don't like being approached on the street like this. And he got very angry and said, I should have told him earlier. Now, bearing in mind, I think this whole thing would have been less than 30 seconds. So I was thinking by the time I get to this next junction, I'm gonna cross over and he's not going to cross with me, so it'd be fine. And I just thought, whatever. But he got so nasty and basically you you shouldn't have, you should have told me ages ago. Um, and I, I just thought, hang on, how, how did this turn into me being the a-hole? Because I, I, I don't understand. So I basically posted some a story on Instagram saying, oh, just, this happened and I didn't really like it. And I tell you what I did do to somebody the other day and they looked so crestfallen and so, and it was abrupt and I hadn't, I hadn't meant for it to be as abrupt as it was. But a guy came up to me, very similar circumstances. I think I was coming out of one of the, I think I was coming out of Farringdon Station. There were always a lot there. And he said, do you mind if I walk with you for a minute and ask you a question? And I said, I'd rather you didn't, which is quite, but it's exactly what I felt. I would rather he did not. I, I do not wish to participate in this dynamic. And he actually looked like I just punched him in the gut. And I felt like literally for the rest of the morning, I thought, oh, I could I have, could I have sugarcoated that somehow? Anyway, the point being is that I talked about this on Instagram and I don't think I've had a response as huge to anything I've ever posted on my stories, apart from maybe Skim's shapewear, to people just saying, no, this happens to me, I hate it, I wear my headphones so that they think that I can't hear even if I'm not listening to anything. I am, um, sorry, I was about to hiccup them. I am um, really, really hate it. I've got, I just tell them no and ask them to leave me alone. And it was just woman after woman after woman. And look, 80% of the people who follow me are women. So um, I'm always going to steer that way. But many, many of them said, he just wouldn't have done that to a man. Let's just be really honest about it. He wouldn't have done that to a man. He wouldn't have challenged a man in that way, which may or may not be the case, but who knows. But it was just interesting to know that actually quite a lot of us are 
not struggling, have experienced this and don't like it. And I'm not going to, I can't, I didn't get the name of the charity. I'm not going to, loads of people have said, you need to get in touch with the charity and tell them that this is going on. I'm not going to do that. I think there are better uses of my time. But I think in the future, unfortunately, because of that experience, if it happens again, I probably will say, please, I'm not interested, please don't. And I, I won't mind about being abrupt because actually that experience yesterday made me feel a bit rubbish afterwards and I didn't appreciate sort of feeling like somebody was having a go at me. The second part of the story that I didn't share with anyone on Instagram was that when I then walked back up Oxford Street or back along Oxford Street to go to get the tube, because at that time of night, like I said, I didn't want to walk because it was potentially unsafe. Uh, he saw me and as I was crossing the road, he d he didn't interact with me, but he just had a very loud conversation on his phone in my personal space. And I thought, was this, is this did you recognize me? But he could have just been somebody with very little uh, appreciation of personal boundary space that kind of thing anyway I just thought I would mention that and if you have had any experiences of that or if you have any insights then either dm me if you're watching this on youtube put a comment below I would be interested to hear from you now I did say that on these shows I will share listener feedback and I actually had a really interesting message on dm from somebody this week who said and I haven't replied yet so if you're listening to this podcast before I've replied then you're going to get another you're going to get a reply at a certain point but anyway the message was, hi Emma, I'm building my home gym and I'm curious what your at-home workout setup is. Your most loved bat, your most loved brands, the best equipment, your room layout, even things like flooring padding you might need, or if you keep shoes and gear in there or in your closet and where you put your iPhone, iPad or whatever for videos, etc. Sharing in case you'd be open to doing, <clears throat> excuse me, a video or a podcast on this. And then supplementary message, I'm just halfway through yesterday's podcast and here you are we the amount of agency to give viewers in sharing what I eat videos? I am one of those people that would benefit as someone recovering from binge eating disorder, even knowing things like which fitness creators videos you trust and follow, even if not sharing the specific workouts themselves would be immensely helpful, wanted to share my two cents. So it's really interesting that that message came in in two parts. And the first part was asking for really quite specific info, like how do you lay out your room? Where do you keep your clothes? Where do you put your shoes? And I have always steered away from giving information that is so specific like that, because you might miss, if you if you if I tell you precisely, and then you think, right, I'll do that, you might miss a much more efficient way for you to do it. Or you might miss something that actually you might, you might do something I do, but you might actually be making life harder for yourself. And one thing I will say along my whole fitness, body image, whatever kind of journey you want to call it, one thing I will say is that it has been doing research, trying things, making mistakes, realizing what I don't like, leaning into what I do like, and sort of tweaking along the way. That is why a lot of this stuff has stuck. Whereas if I had just gone, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I hadn't been in any way flexible, about it I could have made life a bit harder for myself and I I could have given up because I would have thought actually this isn't working for me or in the way that somebody does a diet or back in the day somebody would do a diet and I think well I'm going to do that diet and then I would do it for a bit and it wouldn't work and I would blame the diet but I was trying to stick to something that wasn't suiting me I wasn't trying to find the thing that would suit me I hope that that makes sense so it's quite interesting to get that message which really felt like god that's a huge amount of very specific information you want from me so just to be, as I've said before, and it's not, this is not me gatekeeping anything. This is just how it works for me. I have a living room and I have my furniture set up as I would like my furniture to be for recreation, for watching television, for entertaining. And that is that. And my gym equipment fits around that. So I have a little tray <laughs> and I have my dumbbells on a tray that slides under a table. Two of the dumbbells are too big to slide under the table, so they are just bookends. <laughs> I have a yoga mat that's folded up, rolled up and leaning up against the wall in a in a in behind a plant. And that's pretty much it. The tray also houses some bands and I uh, have a yoga block under the table. It's not very specific, but you might have a bigger living room or you might even have a, a space much bigger than mine. I live in an apartment, so you might have a completely different option available to you that actually would allow you to have some flooring or to have a dedicated area. I don't, I sort of tuck my gym stuff away 
and I have shoes in a shoe cupboard. That's really, that's not me gatekeeping. That's just kind, that's how my stuff is. But it was interesting for someone to say, it would just be kind of good to get a steer if you could be a bit specific. But did I say Pacific? No, God, I've got, I've got this thing with my friend Terry at the moment when we keep making each other laugh by using Pacific instead of specific as a joke, like Kath and Kim, that um, I thought I'd said it on here by mistake. Anyway, I veer away from being too specific because I don't want to, I want to allow people the option to sort of be inspired or get an idea and then run with it to find the thing that will suit them better. And I hope that that's how it comes across. But I am considering about doing a what I in a day with the caveats that I have previously discussed. So I hope that that might be helpful. And before I go, I wanted to talk about a couple of the appointments that I had yesterday because I met with some brands and I got a hold of some products that I thought I would show you if you're watching on YouTube. I, I'm holding the microphone so I can only show you so much. But if you have been around for a while, I love skin food. For the podcast audience, that's me rattling it in a box. So the skin food is magical. I talked about it in a Substack piece that I wrote the other day. And I said, um, it says it's for very dry and rough skin but I find it's absolutely wonderful if my skin's a bit reactive, if it's a little bit sensitized by the active ingredients I'm using. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I said the other day in the Substack, it's like sleeping in your own bed after spending a fortnight away, nothing compares. And the reason I wanted to flag skin food, which is one of the products I've probably recommended most in my entire career in beauty, is that I was with the PR lovely Susanna and um, she mentioned the nourishing cleansing balm. And she saw, I think uh, someone else was talking to me about this the other day because Caroline Hirons has launched the uh, Skin Rocks Cleansing Balm. I don't normally like cleansing balms, but I really, really like that one. And so uh, they, Sue said, why don't you try this one? So I thought I would. So I shall be feeding back on that. If it's anything like as luxuriously comforting a skin food, then I will be all up in it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, because I feel like this is a brand that doesn't get a huge amount of love. I feel like it's one of those brands that I think with beauty, it's become about getting people excited. It's become about gimmicks. It's become about going viral. And what that means often is that we lose sight of those products that do the job really well that have been around for ages, but don't have any of that new sparkle and fanfare around them. And it's a shame because they're still wonderful. So I wanted to flag, again, if you're watching on YouTube, podcast listeners, there's the rattle. So I'm holding up three tubes of Lanolips. And I've got the tinted lip balm SPF 30 in um, a pink and a nude, I think. And I'm also holding up the new Golden Dry Skin Miracle Salve, which is an all over dry skin salve there's also I thought I'd picked it up but it's not here there's an overnight lip product which uh, if you know I always talk about dry lips just put vaseline, loads of vaseline on at night but I'm going to try the Lana lips one because again they've been around for ages it's not sexy it's not new there's no razzle dazzle there's no celebrity endorsement but they are just really well formulated good reliable products but if you were to go through and search lip balms really good quality hydrating lip balms, they probably wouldn't come up in your search. And that's a damn shame um, because they're very, very good. And so the last thing I wanted to mention, I said I went to the Space NK lunch and um, halfway through the lunch, a bag arrived on everyone's desk. Now, bearing in mind, they were well, I reckon there were over 100 people there. But bearing in mind, um, everyone suddenly, the waiters come in and they, they place this pink, beautiful pink wash bag that says dirty face clean face on it and of course it is a special delivery from Caroline Hirons and Skin Rocks and inside there was a retinoid too so I don't know if she knew if it was that personalized but obviously retinoid too is my retinoid the support oil which is great again a little bit like skin food when my skin becomes oversensitized the support oil is one of the few things that actually calms it down Recently, I use skin food simply because I think I had an allergy to a makeup product. I think I'm allergic to that Christian Dior foundation, which is really quite heartbreaking. That's a gorgeous foundation. But my skin has been feeling very, very tight. And so I have sort of been alternating support oil in the day and then slathering on the skin food at night. And that's really, really helped. There's also a moisturizer. And I think this is an absolutely gorgeous 
delicious quenching hydrating moisturizer and i'm so delighted there is actually i'm trying to one-handedly get this out of the bag for youtube there is a skin rocks cleansing balm so that's really nice there were four incredible skin rocks products and also this wash bag which is bright pink. I mean, the thing with Caroline's products, you are never going to leave them in a hotel room. You're never going to leave them in someone else's bathroom because they are so bright and vivid that there's no way you could possibly. But um, that's, I think, everything for bullet points. So if you have any questions about anything that I've said, anything that you would like me to elaborate on, especially when it comes to the products, for example, or if you have any thoughts about the sort of being specific and holding things back and that kind of thing, as that listener did, then please do email me, office at emmaguns.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please comment underneath. The more comments, the more things will get seen. And as it is a new channel at the moment, it will be great to get some traffic and some uh, engagement going on there. Or you can always DM me on Instagram and Twitter, as so many of you have this week. And um, yeah, all, the, all, this, all, the, all that's left to say is thank you so much for listening. I will see you on the next one.